Hey guys, uh, we're going to be doing sort of a, a different kind of a video today. Um, we're not going to be working on the pedals because we're waiting on uh, some tools to arrive. So it, that sort of on halt. Um, what we're going to be making is a spindle lock uh, for the milling machine. And uh, you can buy these spindle locks for about, uh, you know, fit anywhere from 50 bucks to about 100 bucks, uh, depending on where you buy them. Uh, but I've had this uh, piece of aluminum uh, waiting around for something, and I'm finally going to use it. So uh, I'm going to be making a spindle lock. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to face off uh, both sides of this. Uh, I already cut it in the bandsaw uh, very poorly, you might see. Um, <laughs> I don't think I used the right blade, but that's, that's okay. Um, we're going to face off both sides and then we're going to bore out the center and then we are going to drill uh, three holes on the top and insert set screws so that it, 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 it locks itself to the top uh, section of the spindle and then drill a, a, another hole on the bottom that's uh, threaded again but it's going to be a, a longer bolt and the tip of it's going to be uh, sort of shaved so it fits in the spindle that little spindle uh, dimple uh, so that way all you have to do is is turn the bolt and it locks the spindle in place so you can uh, remove and install your tools much easier um, I've been wanting to do a spindle lock for a while so uh, this is my opportunity to do one Okay, so we put the workpiece onto the milling machine so that we could face off both ends. And facing off the ends was probably the easiest part of making this thing. Uh, th this took us a lot longer than it should have, and that's because we don't have a 90 degree face mill. Uh, this is yet another situation where having a 90 degree face mill would have saved us hours worth of work. Uh, it looks like we're just going to have to get one. I'm, I'm finding way too many jobs where using a half inch end mill just isn't cutting it, so... Uh, it just takes way too much time. If anybody out there has a, a 3 inch diameter 90 degree face mill with an R8 arbor that they'd like to either give us to support the cause or that can sell us at a decent price, uh, send me a message and uh, we'll talk about it. So after I finished facing off uh, one end, I tried to locate the exact center using a, a coaxial indicator, but it turns out that the coaxial indicator I purchased doesn't work. Uh, it used to work just fine. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Uh, I tried taking it apart to see if I could fix it, but nothing I did helped at all, so uh, I think it's a goner. I guess I'll just have to get another one. Even though the indicator uh, didn't work, I, I decided to drill a hole anyway. Uh, it was pretty close to center, and this thing doesn't need to be that exact, so I'm only drilling this hole so that I can bore it out. Okay, so after the hole was was drilled, I flipped a part over and started facing off the other end. Uh, this spindle lock only needs to be about two inches in total depth, so I used the face mill to get down to the depth that I needed, which which didn't take that long. Uh, after that, I had to find the center again, so I used a more traditional method. This is just a, a standard center finder, and all you do is move the table until the center finder jumps off axis, and then you set your DRO, uh, move to the other side, repeat the same process, and divide by two, and you've got your center. The next thing I needed to do was bore out the center hole, but uh, first I had to make a couple of modifications to the outside of the workpiece. You see, this uh, this is a four-inch diameter round bar, and the mini lathe I have won't quite hold that big of a bar, so I had to mill out four flats so that it would fit in the four jaw chuck. And these flats are only temporary, as you'll see later on. I purchased a, a brand new half inch boring bar, but I had to come up with a way to hold it in place because I don't have a half inch boring bar holder. Okay, so I'll stop the video real quick just to go over a couple of things here. Um, this is a 3 8 boring bar holder uh, and, it, and it works just fine but the 3 8 uh, boring bar set that I have is uh, well it's crap uh, it doesn't cut very well and I'm gonna have to uh, get a stone or something to dress up the uh, the bits on that set uh, because it just doesn't doesn't cut at all um, 
so I went ahead and purchased a, a half inch boring bar with a insert because I wanted to use it on the milling machine and the boring head that I have takes half inch inserts uh, and I didn't expect to be using on a lathe uh, so I, I had to use it on the lathe and I didn't have a holder for it so I went ahead and made one uh, it's just a, a regular block of aluminum that's been milled out uh, right on the, here on the side so that it can clamp into this other tool holder uh, I drilled and tapped two holes in the top so that I could hold the tool in there with a couple of bolts and that's basically all this is yeah I, I, I just wanted to stop and explain that I, I, I didn't have a, a tool holder and I went ahead and made one. I didn't show how I made it in the video, but uh, you can get an idea how it's made here. So, that's basically it. Alright, let's get back to it. So this spindle lock has two different inner diameters. Uh, the first inner diameter needs to match the outer diameter of the upper ring on the spindle. The second inner diameter has to match the spindle diameter. So the first thing I did was bore out an inner diameter that would match the spindle's outer diameter. Uh, I know this is a little confusing, but, but hopefully you'll get what I mean. Uh, after that was finished, I flipped the workpiece over, uh, flipped the boring bar over, and bore out an inner diameter that would match the upper spindle ring. And after all the boring was done, I gave the outside a, a decent finish. Okay, so all the lathe work is now done. Now I just have to mill out the excess material I don't need. Uh, so I took it back over to the milling machine, and this is the part that took me a while to finish. This is where that 90 degree face mill could have saved me hours of work. All I have is a half inch end mill. That's the biggest end mill that I have. So that's what I had to use, and it, it took me about four hours to complete. So I set the workpiece in the vise with the smallest inner diameter facing up. Uh, this is the end that needs to have most of the material removed. Uh, I started by milling off about a quarter of an inch down and about an eighth of an inch at a time. I probably could have gotten away with uh, milling more material at a time, but I didn't want to push it. This part of the process took three passes to complete. Uh, once I got down to the section that was bored out to the outer diameter of the upper spindle ring, uh, that's where I stopped. Uh, then it was just a matter of using the, using the mill to shape out the section that would hold the bolt that actually locks the spindle in place. Uh, I made sure that that section was thicker than the rest of the lock assembly. Okay, so now I have a somewhat completed spindle lock. Uh, after all the milling was done, I had to drill all the holes. I put one hole into the section that actually locks the spindle, and then three additional holes so that I can mount the, the lock assembly onto the upper spindle ring. I think I'm going to use a, a small sheet of brass on the upper ring so that the holes don't put marks into that ring. After all the holes were drilled, I took it over to the mini vise and clamped it down so that I could uh, tap the holes, and that was it. It's basically finished. Alright guys, so uh, here's the, the finished spindle lock. Uh, let me show you how it functions. Um, all you have to do is, when I turn the spindle, uh, over this way, there's a little hole there, and uh, all I have to do is, is put this, screw this bolt in, and it screws right into the hole and locks it in place. Um, I got this uh, idea from somebody on the CNC forums. You, you can actually buy these spindle locks. Uh, they sell for anywhere between like 50 bucks to maybe 100 bucks uh, online. Uh, but you know, I I didn't I I don't you know really have that kind of cash laying around to uh, to spend on on stuff like this. So I decided to make my own. I I had the the piece of round bar, so I figured you know what I'll just I'll just make my own. 
Uh, and this idea came from somebody on the CNC forums. Uh, his is, I believe, a little different. Uh, his is, uh, I think, this diameter uh, all the way around, even at the bottom. Even It covers up the, the spindle. And I didn't want to cover up the spindle on mine. I wanted to be able to see where the hole was so that I could locate it easier for the, for the actual lock. So... Uh, yeah, uh, this is the this is just uh, my my particular version. Um, I hope this this helps some of you. Uh, if if any of you are are looking to make your own, uh, maybe this will give you a little bit of inspiration. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.